Well, excuse us. Bonnie's busy. So she can't say hi individually. Yeah, I got uh, Amplitube. I, I, so I bought Amplitube um, last year. I bought Amplitube 4, which is a plug-in for um, DAWs, for guitar amp simulations. And um, Alex, uh, my son, said it was really good. So I downloaded it, and I thought I was getting, like, a pretty complete version. But, like, I talked about this before. We had nothing. It was like I was shocked at how little there was there. It was, like, one distortion pedal and one chorus pedal and none of the other stuff. And um, so... Um, we, um, anyway, so I emailed the guy, uh, cause I met, I met, uh, someone at, uh, the NAMM show and I talked to him about it and I said, yeah, it, it, what I, what I've heard so far, I really liked, but it didn't come with much. And he goes, oh, that's weird. And Alex thought it was weird too. And so, um, uh, I went last night, I was, I got an email back from the, on Friday and I finally got around to looking at it and, um, clicked on a link and, and they were going to give it to me. I think I said that on Friday, but I, I don't mind buying it. And so I went ahead and bought Max, which was on sale for $99. And I think if you have the shell, the Amplitude shell, it's which is free, um, then I, th I don't know what Max is. It may be $169 or something, but it was, it was $199 and it came with almost everything, like 300 pedals and amp modelings and rooms and things like that. So, um, so and then I can create a billion presets if I want. And so it was actually, um, uh, it's actually sounding really, really good. Um, so, and Bonnie changed her uh, avatar too. Well, that's interesting. Uh, Dennis did too. It looks like Dennis, Dennis has got a new avatar. I don't, I don't even know what my avatar is. Did mine change? Um, so everybody's here. We're going to talk about pentatonics. So that's why I kind of got the electric out. Um, and we're just going to start with pentatonic number one, and then basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to show it to you. Uh, we're going to, and then I'm, we're going to do some exercises. I'm going to go pretty slow. I'm going to try to go slow. Uh, we're going to do different groupings, and um, uh, we'll, um, and and maybe maybe I will write some tab out of the grouping exercises and then scan that and post it. Uh, that might not be a bad idea, um, uh, because. I don't know why, but I always feel like when I'm teaching playing in groupings, I always feel like when I'm trying to explain it, it, <laughs> it always sounds more complex than it is. You know, it's not hard, but it's, it's sometimes hard to explain. And that was a grouping of three ascending and a grouping of three descending. Uh, so you're just taking the scale and playing it in three three note chunks, um, and so I probably part of the reason is because in my head I could probably I can describe it two or three different ways, and I'm always bouncing back between what's the best way to explain this. So uh, so that's what we're gonna do today, and we'll do, I mean maybe do fours. Fours are hard. Uh, Because you've, you kind of have to lay your finger down to get two strings at some point to, to go from the one note to the next note. And then fives. Actually, one of my favorites are the fives because they sound more random. Also, all these are, I would consider exercises. Those are air quotes. So take a sip for air quotes. We have a drinking game. If you're new, I can't believe any, I don't see anyone new here. But if you are new, we have a drinking game. If I, uh, <clears throat> if I touch my face, it's a punitive sip. We all get to take a sip uh, because we're not supposed to touch our face in the COVID era. Um, and now i got to itch my eye now that I've said that. So now we get another sip. I get two because I forgot to take one for the air quotes. Air quotes is another one. If I refer to myself in the third person, if I swap guitars out, that's, a, that's another sip. If I leave the room... That's a, a sip to fill the time. If I say there will be no quiz on this, that's also a sip. If I drop my pick, that's a sip. If I drop a thumb pick, that's two sips because 
there's no reason on earth why you would drop ever drop a thumb pick and of course I did that's why we have the rule so we have a pretty thorough drinking game now uh, at one point it was Tom's Tom's command sips instead of 10 command it meant it was 10 Gary, Gary coined the phrase Tom's command sips oh Steven's here good to see you Steven Dan Dune, good to see you. Oh, good evening, Dan. Good evening. Jeff Height, phrases like three note chunks are great explanation clarity. Love that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope so. We'll see. We'll see. Mac, Mike, is this Mike? Mc, is this, uh, not, it's not Mike McLean, is it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, most people are drinking coffee, water, Diet Coke. I don't know. If I'm not drinking coffee, it's Diet Coke, but 99% of the time it's coffee. Uh, well, this is less than 93, right? So I did 62 in a row when we started the whole COVID lockdown. This is 93, yeah. So we're going to do, I'm going to show you all five pentatonics. Not today, though. We're going to do one at a time, probably one a day uh, with exercises. And then maybe what I'll also do is give you examples of, of bits of solos that maybe. Uh, kind of uh, parked in that particular pentatonic. Uh, the first one that we're going to learn today, uh, there's a, pretty much every rock guitar player in the history of rock guitar playing has done most of their solos in, in that one spot. So you, you, you're learning a lot with the very, very first, first scale. Um, and, um, and I'm going to explain why it's very popular of the most popular of the five. For one thing, it's actually, uh, probably one of the easier ones, if not the easiest one to play to get under your fingers. So that obviously, cause guitar players are generally very lazy. And I only say that because guitar is, like I've said, is one of those instruments. If I had a 24 fret neck, I could play this E right here. I could play that E in six different places. It's open E here. Right here, 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 and then if I had a 24 fret neck, right about here, okay? Um, in fact, there would be a harmonic right there. Right where that harmonic is, that's where your 24 fret, your 24th fret would be. So technically, I've got five places I could play that E. All right, so why am I think? why do I say guitar players are lazy? Well, it, that's actually, lazy is a, a human <laughs> tendency and uh, not not unique to guitar players and the reason I say that is because there are so many places I can play that E there are also so many different places I could play the same lick and so in through my years and 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 years, and years of dropping the needle down figuring out you know Figuring out licks from guitar solos, um, you realize, oh wait, I could, I could also play it here, or I could play it. Um, and as you start to realize, oh wait, where did he play it? See, on piano, there's only one place you can play that, but on guitar, there could be multiple places you could play the same exact lick. I mean, I could. Okay, but, but which of those ways to play it is the easiest? <laughs> and that's the, way, that's the way Jimmy Page played it. Um, and that's almost always true. So as you're, as you're and I always recommend it, I, I, I say before you look at tab, try to figure it out yourself. I mean, unless it's just insane and like there's no hope. But what, and, and, but, and figure it out yourself and write it out in tab. Um, what you learn five times more by doing that than by just downloading or printing a tab up of a song. Um, your ear gets worked. You, you start to you learn to figure out where things are on the fretboard. Um, you have to determine which location, which position that thing, whatever that riff or whatever was actually played. Um, and, um, and then you're also learning to write tab. And when you learn to write tab, you learn to read tab. Uh, one of the best ways to learn how to read music is to write music. Uh, it's the same thing with words and learning a new language. You know, writing it out helps you read it. Um, so 
that's it's, it's just you learn a lot more by trying to do it yourself rather than just taking the, the simple road. And I've taken the simple road many times. Um, don't get me wrong. In fact, when I did that um, uh, takedown of, and I don't think there's vocals on it yet. Let me see if it's in there. I did last week. I did one of my jobs last week was to do a takedown of. Is it? Oh no! I think he he emailed it to me um, of uh, along the watchtower. <laughs> So the vocals are getting done today. Um, and that was, I did a program, the drums and everything. That's kind of the rough mix right now. The engineers are working on it um, for, a, it's a TV show that uh, was, they needed a, they, they bought the rights to it. And hopefully I won't get a takedown notice on this video for that. Um, it's close, but it's not exact. So um, I did grab the MIDI map or not the MIDI map. I created a MIDI map of tempos and the tempo on that song, it starts at 105 and at some points it goes to 119. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that kind of stuff I love because the song picks up as you get into it and they're just playing live. They're just having fun. But the, the bass part on that one, I had to actually get the tab for because uh, um, it was very complex and it was really quintessential to the, to the tune. And it turns out that Jimi Hendrix played the bass on that. So it's, it was very guitar-like, but it was really tough to play. I actually got my four string out and tuned it down a half step. So I was playing it just like um, he was playing it uh, tuned down a half step because that's what he does. So anyway, that's uh, um, no questions so far. Oh, I did, oh, man. Okay, so that wasn't, I don't think that was Mike McLean. Mac Mike, but I've got a good friend, Mike McLean. Who do or do not? There is no try. <laughs> okay, so uh, sorry, don't mean I get distracted sometimes by that. Well, I get stop signs if there's a question. All right. Um, so the um, um, and what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to I'm going to pull up kind of a lead tone. Um, let's see. And I will only be using um, uh, Amplitude today. Normally I use Guitar Rig, but I'm, I'm just got the software, so I'm trying to learn it. Let me see. I'm going to pull down uh, Amplitude. Let's see. Uh, collections, metal, amps extreme, whoa, Dang. oh, harmonized E minor lead, what, okay, I'm going to have fun with this, um, he's even got all the, the slash ones are here, so, but what I just need is a really good solid lead, uh, what's a red pig? Let's see, we got lead, pushed, crit, valve, crit. oh gosh. Oh, that thing, yeah, no, whoa, it's hissy. Like a real amp, that's so funny. Um, I'm gonna like, yeah, I'm gonna go with more of a classic, let's see. Yeah, let me turn up the noise gate threshold. <laughs> Let's see, um, put a, uh, I could put a rack, like add a delay or something. Um, delay. So I'm going to add a delay, yeah, digital reverb, tap, oh, tap delay, no, just digital delay. Weird, they don't have, oh, other? No. Yeah, I'm just, a full tone. What is it? Oh, no, those are, you have to buy those. Okay. Uh, so I'll just go with the digital delay, but I'm going to roll off the top. Wow. That's a lot of delays. Turn the mix 
next week. Oh, the level affects everything. Sorry. This is like... Okay. Oh my goodness. The heck? Okay, that's too many delays. I'll just go to a mono. Yeah, there you go. Oh, wow. The filter knob on the delay is what creates that old tape sound we were talking about the other day. Um, where the, when the tape gets really old, because <laughs> okay. I mean, just can't afford to get to get uh, to get new tape put in your tape delay. You know, some it, was, it wasn't easy to do. And it wasn't cheap sometimes. I mean, you could just buy a cartridge, but dang, sometimes you know that would be like two gigs worth of money right there. And people just got used to hearing that dark echo so that's that's because of the tape was going bad um, yeah I'll post a link on uh, for for uh, uh, hey Seamus is in the house um, I'll post a link here in a second squirrel <laughs> yeah I'm not really a squirrel this is all for you guys I'm, I'm just I'm but anyway I'm using amplitude um, and um, I could post a link in this video too at some point um, I think I wonder if yeah, you might be able to do a buy it through Amazon. So it's it's a download. You just go to the website and do it. But. All right. So, um, without further ado, hey graphics. <laughs> so, all right. So there's pentatonic number one. Um. Like I said, it's fairly easy. Now, generally, the way I play that is my first finger. So you got your first finger on all these notes here. Now, you wouldn't hold it down. You're going to play these one at a time. Um, but you can see that makes it very easy. So it makes it easy to remember because all you got to do is like, oh, okay, there's half. There's 50% of the notes right there with your first finger. So that makes it very easy. Whatever note this is, that's the minor root. Um, so if... You, you, whatever that red note, see there's a red note there now, whatever that note is, but right now I have it at the fifth fret and that's where we're gonna be. Um, and that would be A minor. That's an A minor pentatonic, okay? Um, and you'll notice there are five, or there are three A's. There's uh, two on the fifth fret of the E strings and there's one on the seventh fret of the D string. And those, uh, that's part of the reason why this is the mo one of the, the more common and popular pentatonics is because you have three roots. And when you, when you have a root available, a lot of times if you're like, okay, um, what key, what, um, you know, how do, how does anyone know what key I'm playing in? Well, there, you've got roots to land on there. So a lot of your licks in a minor pentatonic are going to be A's. They're going to end on A's, I should say. So you want to know where the so you've got three roots and 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 of the five pentatonic shapes that we're ultimately going to learn of the major and minor pentatonics, this is the only one that has three minor or minor roots and three major roots. Okay, the major roots are there, so those are C. So this is also C major pentatonic, exactly the same shape. Sorry, it's a little bit different in size. The graphic. Let me try to make it a little smaller. Now, let's see. Go back to here. Go boom. A little bit better, huh? Kind of cool. You see, I put some work in this. Seamus is in Ireland. I need to go to Ireland. Um, so, um, yeah, so, so you can see we've got three C's and three A's. So this is a great... Pentaton this is a great scale for A minor, for A blues, okay, it's a great scale for that, but it's also a good scale because you've got three C roots if you're in...
So, um, so basically, it's all of these scales are going to work in a minor key and in a major key. And we talked about these in the very, very first lessons of the uh, that I did. Uh, I think the first twelve lessons were on the caged method. So these all came up um, as per related to a shape. And in fact, the major shape that we can think of is this G shape, the G chord, open G chord, slid all the way up, bar the fifth fret. Don't worry about this. You're never going to be asked to play this. But, but that technically, that technically is a C chord. Okay? Just looks like an A, it looks like a G chord. Um, okay, so, well, wow, it's really loud. So, let's go back to this first slide here, and without thinking about what roots we're going to have, we're going to play this scale, and a lot of you already have this down, so, um, if, uh, you, you, there's different things you could do to kind of entertain yourself. One thing, you can always double pick notes. You can do this. That helps you uh, get your speed up. Um, yeah, here, let me, you guys are talking about Discord. Let me, let me go ahead and set up that Discord link. There it is. Boom, boom, ba, ba, boom, boom, boom. I can generate a uh, invite link right now. Invite people. And, uh, oh, I meant to go see Bruce. I need to go see your picture that you posted. So there's the new, there's a disc, there's a discord invite. If you want to join the group, um, be cool to everybody. Everybody be cool to each other. You all are. There's all sorts of pages. And so there's a, there's a Tom's bookmark page, and that's where I upload all the PDFs I create. So every time I write something down on paper here, I scan it and upload the PDF to this uh, Tom's bookmarks. Um, general chit chat. I don't know what t the difference is between Tom's chit chat or Tom's text chat. Um, anyway, but also down here is Tom's CBG build, and uh, Bruce is building me a cigar box guitar, which is really cool of him to do. I think he's only charged me $1,500 for it. Wow, look at all that glue. So that's interesting. So that's, is that the neck being glued to the body? Anyway, you can go to that and you can check out these pictures that Bruce is putting up. Are you just using your phone, Bruce? That's really cool. Fun to have a workshop. Oh, wait, do I see a Starbucks cup in the back there? Uh, I don't know what that is. Kind of looks like a Starbucks cup, but I'm not sure. All right. Anyway. <laughs> so not exciting. Okay. So let's very slowly, um, and this is not something you need to be playing electric on. This can be an acoustic thing. It's no, It doesn't matter. Soloing, you can solo on acoustic or electric. Um, if you're going to play this on bass, it would only be the bottom four notes. If you're going to play it on mandolin, uh, don't. <laughs> So we won't worry about it on mandolin. Okay, put your first finger on. Oh, I know what I want to do. I'm going to turn up the noise gate on this so that the hiss goes away. There we go. Sounds pretty pretty darn good, I have to say. Um, they've got so much better. I used to be able to. I used to be able to like watch TV shows and go, oh, that's such a computer amp, you know, because there'd be this weird top end sizzle. Now, I think probably the problem is <laughs> I've lost my hearing, so I don't hear that top end sizzle anymore. But I do think that they've gotten much better and that you don't you don't hear that digital compression or that digital digital like uh, conversion happening as much. It's much more immediate. So, um, so we have uh, we're going to start with our first finger on the fifth fret of the sixth string. And then we're going to go pinky, which is the uh, was going to be the eighth fret. So I'm going to say one four, all right. And then we're going to use our third finger for the next three notes. Okay, so go one three one three one three. And I'm going to go back and go over this again. I want I want I'm going to say the names of the notes too. Oh, in fact, I should tell you all that stuff. Uh, one and then four one four. 
Okay, so the notes here we have, um, let's see. I can create, I can create text. Uh, let's see. Boom. Whatever. A minor <laughs> pentatonic. Dang, does it need to be so big? A, C, D, E, G. Those are the notes. All right. Where is it? Oh, select font. Okay, here we go. I don't know how big that's going to be. Oh, that's, I forgot. I can. Okay, let's see where it is. Where is it? Where? Did, oh, it's up there. <laughs> here you go, guys. <laughs> Hilarious. Oh, what the heck? Oh, because I made the font so small, it's like all grant. Oh, that's funny. All right, let's change the font. Well, whatever. Here we go. Go 72. Okay. All right, now. Wow, that's crazy. This is so counterintuitive, though, the way this software works, you know? It's just really funny, but I should have done this beforehand. Oh, my gosh. I got to keep making it smaller. Here we go. And I don't want to block. See, I should have put a space in here. I mean, a, a, a return. Ah! <laughs> I just, it's, I'm a clown show. I'm literally a clown show. Okay, I'm going to just do that. That's kind of big enough. You guys get the gist. But those are the notes. It's five notes. A, C, D, E, G. All right? So I'm going to play these again. Um, but this time I'm going to tell you exactly where I want you to put your fingers. And um, so first fret, I mean, I'm sorry, fifth fret of the sixth string, first finger. Then your fourth finger on the eighth fret of the sixth string. And then your first finger on the fifth fret of the fifth string. Then your third finger on the seventh fret of the fifth string. And then your first finger on the fifth fret of the D string, the fourth string. And then the seventh fret with your third finger. Okay? That little chunk right there is the first octave. All right? If we... If we look at that, you can see I'm going from the first red note to the second red note. We're ascending, all right? And those, those notes, I'm going to, let's play them again. That's A, C, D, E, G, and A. And uh, there will not be a quiz on that. I'm not going to quiz you on the names of the notes. However, I'm saying them because... I'm hoping through repetition and osmosis, it'll just be permeated. It'll permeate your brainial, cranial region. So, um, so uh, let's take it from there. Let's start on the third, with the third finger on the seventh fret of the fourth string. And I probably need to get, you know what, I'm gonna, but you see my hand better. I'm, I'm, I'm laying back and chilling out, and it's like, well, you can't see my hand. Okay. Then we're going to go, so first finger on the fifth fret of the third string. <laughs> yes. No, it's just a worn out. Come on. I'm a musician. <laughs> I don't have money for clothes. Okay. Uh, third finger on the seventh fret of the... Uh, third string, first finger on the fifth fret of the second string, pinky on the eighth fret of the second string, then we're going to go to the first string and fifth fret with the first finger and eighth fret with the pinky, okay? So start pinky and we're going to go backwards, okay? Pinky, first finger, next string, pinky, first finger again. Now we're going to go down with the third finger, so we're going to be at the seventh fret on the third string and then down to the to the uh, first finger on the fifth fret, and then seventh fret on the fourth string, fifth fret, again, third finger, seventh fret on the fifth string, first finger, and then pinky, and then first finger. And see, that's a major chord, but... The um, uh, the 
the minor, that, that C that's in our pentatonic scale that I, there, I should have put that on the other screen, but anyway, um, that thing is uh, the flat third, and it, that's what kind of creates the blues sound. So when someone's playing like an A7 chord or something, that's one of the notes that causes the, uh, creates kind of a blues quality. Um, and we're not, we're going to do the blues scales, but we're not going to do those this, we're going to wait until we've learned all the pentatonics first. Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, Mac Mike is in the, in the discord now. No, you do not need, need to make a, a discord server. My genes are well loved. <laughs> So basically, this um, this live stream is just for the purpose of me feeling like I'm being made fun again. Like it takes me right back to, <laughs> to junior junior high. So the major chord I was playing was this, just this one, uh, Pepper. But basically, that's what I'm saying is part part of what makes blues sound bluesy is that you're playing a minor scale, in this case, minor pentatonic scale, over a major chord. So it creates this this kind of tension. Um, it's, if, if you were to play a major, like, uh, a major pentatonic, it would be happier. Um, and it wouldn't qu quite have that same blues sound, you know, the whole premise of blues is that you're sad. So, okay. Um, let's go ahead and I'm going to, we're going to play the scale again, but this time I'm going to tell you the note names. And, um, again, that's not because I'm going to quiz you later on it, but it's because I just, I'm hoping that some of these letters and numbers, and if nothing else, you should learn that that's an A and that this is a C. Um, and if you know the notes on the bottom string, you'll be able to find um, all the pentatonic, all, this pentatonic shape in all 12 keys. Actually, all 24 keys, major and minor keys. So whatever your first finger is on the bottom string, that's going to be the minor key you're in. So if you play this scale at the first fret, this is F minor pentatonic. You play the second fret, that's F sharp right there, or G flat, but F sharp's more common. F sharp minor pentatonic. Okay, and so on and so forth. There's G, and so if you learn your notes on, your, on the bottom string, then you'll be able to find all 12 of the minor pentatonics. The pinky is the root of uh, the major pentatonic, okay? Um, and that was in this graphic here. You can see that, and these, in this case, this is a C note. And so if you line this up, say, E flat, now you, you play that scale there, you're in E flat major. Um, you know, but that's not a very, I mean, that's a fairly common key, but like A major would be more common. So if I played this scale at the second fret, my pinky is the note we determine the major tonality of the scale. This would be A major. Hey Reed, what's going on, man? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and play this scale again, and I'm going to um, I'm going to read out the letter names as we play it. Okay, and you can join along with me here. First finger, start on the bottom string, fifth fret. We have A, pinky is C, first finger is D, third finger is E, first finger is G, third finger is A. There's our octave from here. Then first finger on the third fret. Uh, I'm sorry, on the fourth fifth fret of the third string. There's C again, there's D, first fret, I mean first finger is E, pinky is G, first finger is A, and there's our, there's our second octave of the A, I mean it's the high octave of the A, and then C. So backwards is C, A, G, E, D, C, A, G, C, E, D, C, A. All right. So 
there's several ways, like I said, you know, you can think about what fret you're playing. You can think about oh, one, four, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, four, one, four. You can think about letter names. There's a lot of ways to, to even just think about what you're playing. All right. So let me let me do the what I feel like is a, a difficult task of trying to see if you can play a uh, some groupings. Um, and I find that the descending groupings are easier to, to play than the ascending groupings. But we're going to start with the ascending, meaning... We start in the lowest note and work our way to the top. Um, and I'm, I'm basically going to do groupings of three and then maybe four. And then if, if we have time, I'll do five. I really like five. Five is my favorite. I think that's uh, Eric Johnson's favorite is five. He loves playing groupings of five. He'll do fives and sixes and mixes up. Now, just a, as a, a caveat, this is, this is not how you solo. Okay. I, um, and I have a series, um, I've been asked to kind of revisit um, I've been asked to kind of revisit these, but here I'll, I'll post a link to the first one of these. Let's see, Intro to Improvisation, um, and where I even talk about this specific scale, Let's get a shareable link. Um, and then there are also jam tracks that go with it. But basically, I was just working with this artist named Peter Manos. He's a, an artist signed to um, uh, Capitol Records. And he, he wanted to learn how to solo on the guitar. And it was kind of like, well, you know, that's, it's really, really hard to teach that because most people, what they, most players, what they do is they learn some scales and then they learn some exercises with the scales and then they try to incorporate that into a solo. And it's like, not really how you solo. It's people don't want to hear you do exercises. It's, you know that just doesn't. I mean, occasionally that's. I mean, I could, I can think of some Molly Hatchet solos that are like that. That are exercises. I can think of some. You know, Freebird has some moments like that where it's like, okay, that sounds like an exercise, but, um, but for the most part, people don't want. You know, they want to hear a melody. They want to have you. You know, a, you know, a good solo is when you're listening to a song and it, and you're singing along with a verse and a chorus and it gets to the solo and you sing right along with that solo. That's when you know you've done a good solo is when people sing your solo. And, um, and so that, you know, even though you're not making records, uh, even live, that's something that you want to kind of uh, incorporate. So what I did in that video there that I posted there is I, I play very, very, I got a groove going behind me. I think it's a two chord... like that behind is like a loop and then I just do licks and then I let time pass so that you can copy what I do um, and I'm, I think I zoom in on the hands and everything and the the, the um... <laughs> ah, I can't do this there it is the I, I I haven't had graphics in a while so I've forgotten how to point uh, but I, I have graphics in the video so the scales right there um, exactly the practice of two-part inventions um, good soloing requires improvisation. Well, soloing and improvisation are the same thing. Basically, um, soloing, impro improvising or soloing is, uh, is best done when um, you're creating, you're saying something, you're having a conversation. If I just said a bunch of words or started reciting the alphabet, it would be a pretty boring, you know, conversation. If I just started reading words alphabetically out of the dictionary, that would be nonsense. Um, so what you want to do, I feel like if, if that's your solo over an A minor vamp, uh, that's almost like nonsense. That's almost like reading the phone book. Um, however, the reason you learn these is to, is several things, is to get that scale ingrained in your head, you know, in your fingers, so it's under your fingers, and then also work on your picking hand. Okay, and get these two things timed. Um, and so, and you may use snippet of that. You know, I've used snippet, snippets of that in solos. Uh, there may be times where I, you know. I remember one time um, I came up with this exercise and, um, and I played it for my friend John Dinwiddie when I was talking about... Um, um, when I was talk talking about guitar players that influenced me, he was a friend of my sis older sister's, and was a very good guitar is a very good guitar player, 
And I played him this lick, and he goes, "That's I'm going to call that the robot lick. It sounds like a robot." <laughs> He just said, that sounds like a robot lick. And then like a couple of years later, he was listening to a solo I did. And he goes, what's that lick? That's a cool lick. And I go, oh, that's your robot lick. <laughs> he was making fun of it before, but then he liked it in a context. So even, a, even an exercise can be made musical if you do it right. Um, I could, we could do scales. I'll, I'll tell you one thing. Like a lot of these, see that's a grouping of three. It's, oh wait, any more, there we go. Um, it's a little bit more musical if you use pull-offs. But now you're making it a little bit more guitar-esque. So, you know. That's exactly right, Jeff. It's exactly right. Um, exercises are good, designed to give you dex the you know the the finger dexterity to be able to kind of do whatever you want. That's why you do a lot of variations um, when you're working on these things, and you can make up your own. Like my robot lick was kind of my own invention of a an exercise. Um, other ones like you. Can doing like every other pentatonic note which is kind of in, in major scale it's easier but in pentatonics it's really hard because you got to play basically lay down and play two fingers <laughs> okay at a o o ab a b in the house Making hot noodles. Um. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I definitely think that. I, yeah, and a lot of licks. Well, I think Stevie Wonder. What's that song? Um. <laughs> Uh, that that's that horn section that horn line is is just a pentatonic scale in a kind of a pseudo groupings he mixes it up a little bit and it can totally be usable i mean i i actually you're right i would say lick uh, exercises are more likely to get turned into a hook than into a, a solo solos you want to kind of convey a little bit of emotion with with um with exercises not so much you know their exercises sound very robotic um, i'm going to go back to my cleaner sound though um no, I guess I can turn that here. Yeah. All right. So let's try. Let me see if I can get you to do this groupings of three ascending. Okay. So like I said, what what's going to happen is we're going to go start on one note and we're going to go up three notes total. So one, two, three. So I'm going A, C, E. Okay. And the first note was this one. Okay, now we're going to go to the second note in the scale and go three up from that. So I could do three, uh, a sixteenth note and a seven, uh, an eighth, and it would sound like this. Down beat. One, two. And I think it's easier to hear the the climbing and the groupings of three when I do it that way. The cool thing though is if you do it as straight sixteenth notes. Um, then you're playing like your downbeats are falling in different spots in your in your triplet or in your th groups of three every time. So it sounds more random. So if I play it as th an eighth, two eighth note or two sixteenth notes and an eighth note, it sounds like this. I'm nodding my head in the downbeats. OK, but if I play it just pure sixteenth notes, groupings of three sound much more random. Up. Ah. 
on. <laughs> Who is Sir Duke? Exactly. Sir Duke is the name of the song. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see. Oh, Bass, bass Finder. Uh, what's the name of the video you talked about the jazz? I never talked about the Jasmine S35 and the strings to get for older new beginners. I've, I've never heard of a Jasmine S35. Sorry, Bass Finder. Uh, I don't know what you're referring to. You prob that was probably some other video. There's so many of us. We all look alike. <laughs> all, us, all us guitar teachers, we all look alike. Okay, so let's try to do this. Let me see if I can get us going on this, okay? So first finger, start there and play. And we're gonna, I'm going to put gaps in between these right now for now. But So... Uh, First finger, fourth finger, first finger, okay? And then we're gonna go back one note, and that's our next note that we're gonna start on. We're gonna go up three from that. One, two, three. And we're gonna go back one note, see, this, to that note. So now we're on the third note of the scale. One, two, we're gonna go up three from that. Okay, and then we go back one note, we're gonna be on the seventh fret of the fifth string, and go up three from there. One, two, three. Go back one note, and that takes us to there. We're slowly working our way up the scale. One, uh, first finger, and third finger, and first finger on the next string. Okay, there's our next group of three, chunk of three. We're doing chunks of three. We're gonna go back one note, and that's the next note in the scale. We're gonna start from there and go up three. Third finger, first finger, third finger. Okay. We're gonna go back one to your first finger, and then third finger, and again, first finger on the second string. We're almost done. Go back to the third finger, and we're gonna start go up three from this note. And now we're getting back out to the pinky out here. Okay, back to the first finger, or on the fifth fret, pinky. Okay, and then uh, third finger, or pinky, and then first finger, and then pinky. So that's a really, like, that's so separate and separated and everything, it makes it really difficult to kind of hear the flow of a grouping of three. When you, when you, when I play it so slow, and when you play it in so many, many, many little chunks. So it is one of those things, like, it's one of those things where you'll get it when you get it. And you just gotta kind of go into it. And at one point, you, you, well, especially when it comes to doing it fast, and especially when it comes to getting your right hand um, uh, in sync with your left hand, uh, it's one of those things where it just all of a sudden will feel right. And I can do it much faster descending than ascending. Um, um, Yeah, it's 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 definitely it's definitely feels more natural descending for some reason. I'm not sure why. Okay, let's go ahead and start. Uh, let's try the descending. So let's just play the scale again one more time, um, so that you know we're gonna go. We're gonna start on this note, go down three. We're gonna start on this note, go down three. So if you can kind of visualize the scale, I think that makes it a lot ha a lot easier. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to print up, let's see if I have some tab paper handy here. Let's see, where are we? Uh, live stream. I don't know if I have it downloaded. I may have, I may not. Uh, what's this? That's, oh, here's some right here. Large staff paper. Oh, no, that's staff paper. No, I want tab. Where's the tab paper? That's also step paper. All right, where is it? I may have to just print some up. Oh wait, no. Dang it, I don't have, surely I've got it. Weird. All right. Well, I've certainly done it before. Why don't I? Oh, uh, no, that's.
that's staff paper. Oh, cause I okay, I wasn't doing it, and I was doing the when I we did the finger picking patterns. I was using music, not tab. That's right. All right, so I'm just gonna have to go find some. I know where to find it. Uh, this site is great. Uh, blank sheet music. .net, copy. I'm going to send you the link for this so you guys can download. You can uh, print paper. It's great. Um, just going to do some tab. Boom. Okay. Just print. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this out. The, the ascending and descending groups of three. I may not do it now uh, while you sit there and watch me do it. <laughs> just uh, I feel like already we're, it's kind of like <laughs> You're watching me do way too much CSI Los Angeles, you know, Googling did Bob kill Steve. Um, so, so I printed up some tab paper. I'm going to write out in really awful penmanship the group, the ascending. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's try this again. Here we go. Fifth fret on the bottom string. Five, eight, five. Down to eight, five, seven, five, seven, five. I'm talking about frets here, not fingers. <laughs> seven, five, seven. If you have seven fingers on one hand, I want to talk to you later. Five, seven, five, seven, five, seven. Five, seven, five, seven, five, eight, five, eight, five, eight, five, eight. All right. I don't know if you were able to follow along with that, but uh, yeah, it makes for good TV, doesn't it, Ab? <laughs> Ab. <clears throat> so let me um, let's go descending now. Start with eight. Eight, five, eight. Then five, eight, five. And then eight, five, seven. And then five, seven, five. Seven, five, seven. Five, seven, five. Seven, five, seven. Five, seven, five, and then uh, seven, five, eight, five, eight, five. Okay, was that instructive at all? Did that, the way I enumerated that, and again, I did kind of one, two, three, and one. So I did them in groups of three, musically as well um so uh oh i touched my face so let's take a sip yeah base base finder i've never so it was somebody else because i've never posted a, a link for um on Amazon for any acoustic guitar, um, in all inclusive. I did a video about buying an acoustic guitar a while, quite a while ago. Um, and, um, that was, I can show you, I can, I can show you that one. Um, I can find that one, but, uh, and I did have links, but it was just links to look at stuff. It, I don't think they were Amazon links. I think all the links went to Sweetwater or something like that. Um, but I did not, I, I've not ever posted links to buy a case, guitar strings and all like one of those kits for beginners. I would hate to do that because I would hate for you to come back to me later and go, it was a piece of crap guitar. It's like, I, I'm not endorsing any, any of these things. I'm not really, uh, the stuff that I put, the links I put in are things I actually use, but, um, <laughs> peppers eating popcorn, wondering what's going to happen next. Well, I'm going to do the groupings of four. Um, and I'll try to go real slow. I'm going to do it the same way I just did what I, uh, we did there. Um, and you'll see how groupings of four is harder because of, of the way you have to move your finger to get to the next. You're moving across the strings like this and less 
you know, along the neck. So, so grouping to four slowly, I'll show you, is five, eight, five, seven. So there's the first group of four, okay? The next one starts on the pinky. So seven, or sorry, eight, five, seven, five. Don't worry, I'm gonna slow down. I just wanna show you what, the, what happens. So we're here, right? The next starting note is there the fifth fret of the string below. You see that? So that's a difficult motion. Um, see, groups of three, you never have that motion. But groups of four. So, yeah, okay, so watch this. It gets even harder. So I'll start again. First finger on the uh, fifth fret, then eight, five, seven, eight on the bottom, five, seven, five, and then five on the fifth string, seven, five, seven, and then seven. See, that's the toughie right there. So a lot of times the trick is when you play a note that you know you're gonna to need to go up a string on the same fret, okay? So I'm playing this seventh fret right here, and I know I've gotta play this note here. The trick is, is to play, instead of playing, putting, playing the string right here, um, yeah, bass, bass finder, sorry, yeah, it's not, I never have posted a video, uh, 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 so it might, it must have been someone else. Um, I, you know, I, I don't remember ever posting a video with a link, an Amazon link for a guitar case and strings, you know, beginner kit. I've, I don't, I don't recall ever doing that. Sorry. Um, so you get the string here. Ultimately, normally you would play the string on the tip of your finger, okay? But instead, you use a flush your finger and then roll your finger like this. <laughs> That's a whole new skill. So yeah, it's it's kind of weird, and it's not quite you know. Uh, and that's the A setting. Jim got lucky and found one. What? Oh. <laughs> Let's see, but because over the ocean, uh, all right. Touching my face. Yeah, Bo Bonnie, how many times have you heard that joke? Okay. <laughs> So yeah, those groupings of four can be pesky. And so when you're descending um, on the groupings of four, and I may write those out and scan, that may be part of the scan that I send you. Um, but uh, it, like I said, it's an exercise. And um, I think I did a lot of these kind of things when I was 13, 14, because I felt like I had to. And they paid off. I mean, there was definitely dividends that paid off. I didn't really start doing the groupings of five. Let me show you that one in a second. Until I heard Eric Johnson and realized he did it. I was like, oh, that's cool. Uh, the groupings of five really sounds, I love the way they sound. But um, groupings of four, so now it's kind of the opposite thing. So I'm playing pinky, four, one, four, one. And so my, I use the tip of my finger and then I lay my finger down to get that as the next note. So you can practice starting a, a second group of four by going. So I'm going eight, five, eight, five, and then five on the first. So it's eight, five, eight, five, and then five on the first string. I don't know if my guitar is too loud, sorry.
Okay. So what I'd rather do um, than a bunch of exercises, so I, I'd rather go ahead and write those out and scan them. And then if you want to work on them, go for it. I don't feel like they're critical, which is kind of, kind of, this is going to, this is educating my next four videos <laughs> because I'm probably not going to do a lot of grouping exercises because it's really, really hard to do this way. If I was sitting in front of you, it's hard enough. If we were sitting one-on-one, -on -one, it's hard enough to get a student to get understand and get groupings of threes and fours down. Uh, usually I would have to write them out and they would have to practice them at home. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So I guess you would have homework then. So what I want to do is I'm going to um, just play a lick you, that's using this scale and I want you to copy. Okay, kind of like I did in those uh, in my series that I posted the video of the uh, <coughs> Um, uh, that I posted a video on uh, the intro to improvisation, okay? So it's, I'm going to try to keep it real simple and then maybe get more complex. Um, and maybe I'll try to... Uh, well, I may accidentally stumble upon some known licks. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Okay, so here, there's our first one. I'm going to hit just that A note, the root. I'm going to let it ring like that. A very Hendrixy thing to do. Okay, do that for me. Okay, now do that again, and then hit the low A. Okay, now try, um, we're going to go... Seven, five, seven. Okay. You can do it. Here's another thing you can do. You can pull off and then play the... So pull off seven to five. And when I pull off... I've already got my first finger on the five, for one thing, and I'm pulling, I'm not pulling off like that, I'm not pulling straight off, I'm pulling more towards the ground, so I'm kind of technically, it's more like you're plucking the string with your third finger. Okay. So that's the exact same lick as this, but it's a little bit more guitar-esque because it has a pull-off, which is something a piano player can't do. I guess, I don't know if sax can do it, but you know, other instruments can't do that sound. Okay, now what I just did there was called a rake. That's difficult. Um, and that's where I basically, I mute all the strings except the one I want. And I, I scrape the pick across the... Creates this kind of when there's a lot of gain, it creates kind of a whoosh going into it. So like if I were to use this sound. Let me turn it up a little bit. Weird. I, mean, I turned it down too much. Oh, I got a pinch harmonic there, didn't I? Okay, I'm going to go back to this one. Okay, so back to you guys. Sorry. All right, so here's another lick. Okay, oh, there's another variation. I pulled off and then hammered on. That's very guitar like, right? You got two guitar, two guitar tricks in one a pull off and a hammer on. I could also play, play the pluck the first two notes seven, five, and then hammer on. an example um, in Black Dog of having to play do the, the rolling the finger thing he goes play the just this part of the lick and so because it's kind of hard a lot of guitar players would, wouldn't do that lick uh, but 
Ding. So third, uh, third fret. I'm sorry, third finger on the third string, sixth fret. Then play the E note right there on the second string, fifth fret. And then the C note on the on the fifth fret. Sorry, also the fifth fret of the second string. Dang it! I touched my face again. I had something in my eye. I've only got like two sips left, so I got to be careful. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I have nothing. Oh, <laughs> well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to have to crack open this, I guess. <laughs> it's the only thing I have to drink in my office right now. <sighs> Funny. That's top shelf stuff right there, man. So I'm playing, again, third, uh, seventh fret on the third string with my third finger. First finger there. And good. That's what he does. So, whew, I'm out of breath. You guys are all, <laughs> you got my sound down, don't you? <laughs> you guys crack me up. Yeah, those would be happy. This would be a completely different live stream if those were my sips. <laughs> uh, see, I should do that, except I don't want to cause anybody to stumble, and all you churchgoers know what I'm talking about. And now I just took a sip that I did, that was un, it was an unprovoked sip. <laughs> um, okay, so let's go back to this. Okay, so let's do let's pluck each of those three notes again. Now let's go to the second. Uh, I'm sorry, third string, first finger. Give it a wiggle. See if you can keep it. Now, if you want to do variations on slides and pull, or pull-offs and hammer-ons. So that one, I just did a pull-off and a hammer-on. I did a pull-off and a pluck. And then I did a pluck, pluck, hammer-on. <laughs> okay. Those are, and then you could also go. Or try that. Take your third finger, put it on there, and go slide down two frets and slide back up. Um, so let's do that. Now let's do go back to the first lick. Now to this note and then to back to the root, the A. So we're going A, G, A, C, G, or C, A. See, that's a lick. That's a that's a riff. That's a. The other thing you can do again, it's it's. I, I, you know, I said this before. I had a friend that did the what was it, the uh, Dizzy Miss Lizzie. He, he did, they did that song. That lick is in the song like 47 times. So he did he somehow managed a way to do, do it. He did it 47 different ways. He'd worked it out so that when, every time they played that song. And he was just a lead guitar player. He was bored. And he was like, okay. He was like. And then he did. You know, he may have, you know. Uh, or. He just he kind of some maybe changed it a little bit, um, like some of the timing of it too, <laughs> but he never did it the same way twice. And he was telling me, you know, I was I caught him doing it the first time, and the next the next time they did that song, I he was like he knew I knew, <laughs> and so he was looking at me the whole time. I was like we were die, I was dying, I was dying, I was running sound at that point for that club, but um, but the uh, um. The thing is, you can take a lick like this, and again, I'm using those, uh, this here, <laughs> this uh, uh, this pentatonic shape scale, and I'm I'm 
playing kind of an A minor, so these are the A minor roots, okay? The red notes are the roots. Those are, you got three A's. Um, but you could play that one, two, three. Uh, you could start it on any point in the, in the bar, any point in the beat, um, and it's gonna sound a little different. You know, one, four, one. You know, depending on where you place it in the beat, that same lick can sound different. It'll have a completely different impact because of where it's played. Okay, um, let's see. Yeah, I definitely got to go to Scotland. We have... Where is he? Where is our Scott? Our resident Scott? Is it David? David? Who was it was talking about the... You guys are going all off on... <laughs> you guys have a whole thing going on over there. You know, I watch other live streams and they're never talking to each other. <laughs> it's only you guys. I watch Rick Beato's and they're all like trying to get his... Like ask him questions and stuff like that. It's really funny. Like... Do you like this band? Do you like that band? Do you like this band? Do you like that band? It cracks me up. All these bands, I'm like, I've never heard of any of these bands. All these people are like, oh, you got to check out this band. They're the best band ever, blah, blah, blah. It's like, I guess they're all trying to get their band promoted by uh, Rick Beato so they can get millions and millions of views, spins. Um, okay, so uh, let's see. A real common... Now, on acoustic, it's a hard to bend, so I'm not going to do any bending licks. Let's not do any bending licks. Um, okay, here's a, here's a fun one. Again, I'm going to stick with the kind of middle. These, it's a little bit easier to play these third finger and first finger licks like that. Uh, yes. These are all right now licks. You can play them over, Tom, you can play them over a minor chord, too. If You could do minor blues or just a minor vamp. Right? You could totally have a minor rhythm. Okay, so that's very in the pocket. There are no notes that are clashing or, or out of the key. If you play it over kind of a soul thing or an R, a blues thing or an R&B thing, then you've got um, the C note, in this case, because we're in the key of A, you've got the C note that's clashing with the C sharp. But you'll notice every time I play that C note, I kind of want to bend it, right? I always, I don't maybe, I don't maybe get all the way up to C sharp, but I always want to give it a little, little. Now, if I were in A minor, I wouldn't do that. See, if I'm playing over an A minor chord, I'd hold fast to that C note. But if I'm playing over a C sharp, or with a chord with a C sharp in it, like the A, I might give it a little pull, just to, and, and I'm bending down towards the floor. Normally you would bend up, but with the first figure, it's easier to kind of pull it towards the floor. Um, uh, no, so basically what's happening is in a blues progression, um, in the, say if we're playing in blues in A, uh, Mike is asking, I'm still a little confused about minor over ma major. You play uh, the minor first, then switch to major. No. Uh, what's happening is the chord you're playing over, someone's playing a, an A major chord, okay? Um, for example, um, let's see. For example, a piano. I got all sorts of stuff on my piano right now. Okay, I don't know how 
close that was to the click because the click was really quiet. Um, you know what? I can move this so it drops to the eighth note. Ah, there we go. All right, now I'm going to slow down the tempo to something more bluesy. That's uh, too slow. 92 beats per M. Let's see what that sounds like. I'm going to put some drums in here. Uh, drummer. Mm, let's go with R and B. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Okay, I think we need a bass player. It's pretty boring. Let me uh, let me go to the four chord. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to A set or D seven here. Ah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go up, go up a fourth, but then I'm gonna take these top voicings, the top two voicings down an octave. Okay, now we have this. You guys hear that? Is that all right? All right, so and now I'll go back to here. So I just created basically an A7 to D7 BAM. sharp so basically Tom I think it was Tom that asked the question <coughs> sorry um, I think it was Tom that asked the question Let me get my windows up here um, oh no no it was Mike Mike Mick, Mike yeah so basically what I was doing was I was playing an A minor scale and it shouldn't work but it does because that's kind of what blues players did and so it, we're used to hearing um, that minor scales. And I'm talking about pentatonic scales here. I wouldn't do a pure minor diatonic scale. Pentatonic is only five notes. Diatonic is seven notes. Um, I wouldn't do a minor pentatonic, I mean a minor, minor diatonic over a, a blues progression in it. You know, it, that wouldn't work as well. But the... A minor pentatonic is a simpler uh, scale. It's only five notes, and there's really only one note that clashes, and that's the C natural clashes, clashes with the C sharp in the major chord. Um, and so that's where um, you get that kind of blues sound from. And there's also the blues note, which, which we haven't talked about. We will talk about later. So... Uh, yeah, you could, you could, if I went to C, okay, let's do that. I'll, I can make that happen, okay? I'm going to highlight my bass and piano here and go down. Uh, the bass is going to get kind of low, but... Hey, okay, 
before I do that, let me let me preface it with a little bit of ex explanation. It's a good question. Um, uh, I the cool thing is because because this is because this is also C major. I could stay in the scale, but what's going to happen is the when the A chord is happening and I'm playing this this scale, it's going to sound bluesy. But when the C chord happens, even though the C chord is kind of a C7 chord, this scale is going to sound a little bit more happy, a little more friendly. It's not going to sound as bluesy. If I wanted it to sound bluesy, then I just would move this up three frets so that my first finger is on a C note. Okay, I'll do both so you can hear what it happened. Okay, what happens there? I'm going to move it up. I almost like staying put because it creates a, a nice distance. sounds like an Adele song or something <laughs> but it's a very cool blues kind of vibe thing so oh Gary's got the, the coming down from Moses <laughs> Gary had to go up the hill to get these Gary thank you so much for walking all the way up the mountain and now yeah we got we got 12 of them now oh if I ex exchange this, thy spectacles that's one really if I swap out glasses you do or did you just want to write out the word spectacles <laughs> I think that's what uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Should a qu quiz actually occur? Occur? Then you have to reverse yourself. So we're, we're <laughs> I'm not going to do that. All right. So anyway, I, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, oh, I'm glad you get it, Mike. That's <laughs> that's huge. <laughs> hey, you can't beat a free guitar lesson, right? <laughs> you, you pay some. <laughs> Pay someone 50 bucks for that. So, um, let's see. Um, all right. So I'm going to stop here and I've got, cause I went really long Monday. So I'm going to stop here. I got a story, right? I'm supposed to share a story. Um, and, uh, um, so, and I just touched my face, like, like seriously touched my face. I, I, I seriously think that it's becoming Pav Pavlovian. I think when I'm thirsty, I touch my face now. So it's actually had the opposite effect. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, because I don't really teach anymore. I've I've got occasionally I will teach artists. I will work with artists or actors. I'll coach actors, um, but those are usually pretty intensive. Like I've done like four hour sessions or things like that. Uh, generally, I don't. I taught privately for thirty five years. From the age of fifteen, I started teaching up until about the age of 50. So I, I've taught a lot. Diana, Diane was keeping track of the stories and I, I know what the story is today, but we'll see if Diane remembers. I don't know if, she, have we seen her? Oh yeah, Diane's a highlight. Have we seen her yet? And now people are gonna start checking out. This is a John Mellencamp story. Boop -a -doop -boop -a -doop -boop -boop -boop. I'm I'm sc I'm scanning right now looking for Diane's name. I'm I'm not sure if I see her, but I know the story. Oh, there she is. Okay, she's here. Oh, there you are. Sorry. Yeah, John Mellencamp. Okay. okay. So I already told the one about uh, going to the concert and not getting in. Well, this was before that. This is before I knew Beth. This, and um, there was this woman that I dated. Um, kind of, we, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think you, this woman you could date. She just was like, she was the wind. She was a hippie. And I found out later after <laughs> I'd hung out with her a lot. Uh, and she was, 
she was from it was in Indiana when we met um, and uh, um, but this we went to a, the con we went to the Mellencamp concert in Los Angeles when I, I moved out here and she was out here too um, and so she took me to the concert because she knew the band well I didn't realize <laughs> that she was a drug smuggler. She looked like Farrah Fawcett, so she could fly into any airport and have anything in her bag, and she uh, she could get away with it. Now, she was smuggling just weed, mostly from Hawaii. This is back in the late 70s, early 80s. So this is mid early 80s, and um, she was a lot older than me, but we were just, you know, we were mostly just friends. And um, she just really liked me, and she... She loved for me. She loved me talking about Jesus. That was like her favorite thing to get me talking about Jesus. So she really liked that. Um, uh, and so, um, okay, I've got to text somebody. Sorry, I got a business. Oh goodness, he's been texting me a lot. Um, so I will get to work as soon as we're done here. So anyway, she 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 got great tickets and backstage passes for the. Mellon Camp concert and asked me if I wanted to go. And I said, heck yeah, let's go. So we went and um, she, uh, we're sitting, we, our seats were in the front row and they had, at the time they had these stickers that you would get. They were like satin stickers and you peel them off and you put them on your leg and ours were like after party backstage. And um, so after the show, was it after? Yeah, it was after the show we could hang out at backstage at the party. Great. Okay. So um, we sit down. We're like in the fourth row. And it's just me and this girl. Um, Ozma was her name. Uh, not her real name, but that was her name that she gave herself. Ozma. Like Princess Ozma from Wizard of Oz. And, um, and she was great. She was awesome. Uh, but so we're sitting here and then... The, to my left are four high school kids. And I'm like, you know, Mellencamp's not exactly high school kid music. And they're kind of sitting there. And I'm like, they've got satin patches on their legs too. And theirs said all access. Which meant they could go before the concert backstage. They could go during the concert backstage. And they could go afterwards. And I'm like... Well, who are they? You know, so I started a conversation with the, the kids sitting next to me. And it's two boys and two girls. And um, I say, so who are you guys? And um, they go, oh, uh, and oh, we're friends with them. And, and they're, uh, John Mellencamp is their cousin. And um, I said, oh, wow, cool. Okay. Well, and, you know, the age difference is pretty big. But, you know, that can happen with cousins. And, um, so, so I'm just saying, you know, well, that's cool that you, you get to hang out backstage, you get to meet John and everything. Oh yeah. You know, we got to talk to him and uh, oh yeah. you know, and they know him because they're cousins and everything. So, but the friends, you know, I was talking to the friends and they're like, yeah, it was pretty cool. You know, not our favorite style of music or whatever. And, and then one of the kids, one of the girls says, Hey, tell them who your dad is. And, you know, about the two kids that were cousins with Mellencamp. And I'm like, well, your dad is obviously some relation to, you know, is, is John Mellencamp's dad or mom's brother or sister, you know. And, you know, do, I'm doing the math in my head. Like, what's your really, tell him who your dad is. And the kid, the girl's like, no, I don't want to tell him who the dad is. I don't want to tell him who my dad is. And no, no, tell him who your dad is. No, I don't want to tell him. I'm like, why, 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 why don't you want to tell me who your dad is? And finally she relents and she goes, she goes, uh, my dad is Ernest Borgnine. And I went, Ernest Borgnine, the actor? And she goes, yeah. And I said, I said, so you're telling me that John Cougar Mellencamp's uncle is Ernest Borgnine? <laughs> you know, and she, and she goes, yeah. And he's like, he's one of those character actors. And I know many of you know who he is, but if not, you look up Ernest Borgnine. And I looked at her. <laughs> you know, I'm not best. I'm not very good at holding my words. But I said, well, I see the resemblance. And she goes, oh, God. <laughs> she, cause she looked just like Ernest Borgnine. And she was like, oh, God. <laughs> I was like, oh, man. 
Now we went backstage and we hung out. It was it was fun. I mean, I, I met John Mellencamp. He was a little guy. And the funny thing is that Toby, his bass player, who was the guy that a couple years later I tried to get me tried to get to get me uh, passes for the show at the Forum, and and he didn't. And again, I don't know if it was because he like, yeah, I'm not getting you passes, or it was because he forgot, or because he was a heroin addict at the time. Uh, it could have been all of the above. Um, but I hung out with Toby and Toby's like super tall and the whole band is tall. And it was just funny because Mellencamp was this short guy and it, it, um, um, it kind of looked funny to have him. He would actually get on the backs of some of the other guys in the band and stuff just because they were so monstrous compared to him. Um, but anyway, it was, yeah, that was a pretty, um, Osmo was a character. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, have to get off, um, And in just a second, um, I'm getting a bunch of files sent to me. So, anyway, was that a good... Mikhail's Navy. That's right. He was in Mikhail's Navy. Um, he was red. Yep. Airwolf. Yep. So that was... <laughs> that was Ernest Borgnine. And uh, that was his... It was two of his kids there. I don't know how many kids he had, but that were two of them right there. It's pretty, pretty darn funny. So, um, anyway, that's, yeah, that's my other Mellencamp story. I'm going to need to come up with a story for Friday, aren't I? Dang it. Uh, well, I'll probably, I'll, I'm sure I'll come up with something. Um, I recommend that song on your electric guitar. Which song is that? Red is a great movie, Red and Red 2. Oh, was he in Red? The movie Red? Is that the um, spy one? Yep, Roger, I got to get to work too. Oh man, I'm getting emails galore here. So I'm going to have to log off. But, it, you know, I went long and uh, uh, get on, on Monday. So if you really want more of me, <laughs> go back and watch Monday because I went on and on and on, you know, as I'm prone to. So. Uh, God bless you. Thank you so much for watching. We had a good good view count here. We got uh, 45, I think was the peak. Maybe, yeah, 45 is the highest I've seen. So that's really awesome. Oh, 46. Oh, look at that. Crazy. Okay. So Friday, we'll continue with the Pentax. We'll do the next one. And it's it's uh, it's not a bad one either. Um, it's I would call it the second most uh, common, most used pentatonic, mainly because it's right next door to the most used one. It has three major roots, but only two minor roots in it. So we'll we'll look at that one next uh, on Friday, and I'll have some more graphics too. And I'll try to write out um, those the groupings of three and groupings of four if I get a chance. But it looks like I'm getting a bunch of emails and texts right now. It looks like I'm going to be busy the rest of the day. So hopefully I didn't wear myself out. I got to get some food too. So I'll talk to you soon. God bless you guys. Bye bye.